a young Billings woman facing a heartache on her birthday. It makes me angry when anything gets stolen, but Mikey's probably one of the sweetest, kindest people that you would want to meet. Another bike stolen at Billings, but this is no ordinary one. Plus, lucky to be alive. I knew that it was going to be bad. I actually thought in the back of my mind that this might be the last thing that I see. We speak with one man who barely survived the hardened pileup accident Friday and a new exhibit for Magic City children. All these kids can enjoy something new and something exciting and, and, and have that be a good part of the community. We'll take you in the aisles of this grocery store and check out what Wise Wonders is offering up. And we'll say goodbye to longtime sports director Scott Breen. The MTN News starts right good now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. Today was supposed to be a celebration for Mikey Little as she turns 24 years old. But now there's a cloud hanging over her birthday as the Billings resident who lives with cerebral palsy had her adaptive tricycle stolen sometime over the last week. Our Casey Conlon has more. Mikey Little doesn't drive a car, so the trike is her only means of transportation. And now it's missing after someone stole it right out of this front yard. I'm sure your car's pretty important, so it, it, it's, it's my car, basically. So. Little's tricycle looks a lot like this one, except the basket in the back is white and there's a front basket that's black. She rode it to an appointment on July 12th and then went out of town for a few days. When she went to use it Monday, it wasn't in its yeah. normal spot right next to the porch. I was a hot mess. Yesterday was rough. Like, I was pretty devastated. Tuesday was better. A birthday lunch at CJ's always helps. I kind of gave myself a day and then today I was like, okay, like it, some, I know something good is going to come out of it. But friend Peggy Swally is still angry. They know what that, that trike is for. It's not for normal riding. It's for somebody who really needs to have it. Little filed a police report and posted about the theft on her Facebook page, but Swally took it a step farther, posting in the Billings Neighborhood Watch page for its 27,000 members. It's worth a try to put it out there because there's a lot of people on that page. So I don't necessarily have faith that the person who stole it's going to grow a conscious and give it back. But, but if people see it, they might be able to help. She's already received a message about someone possibly donating a new trike, which would be a huge help. They're hard to come by, but oh, I'll figure it out somehow. But yeah. But fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing new. She spent her whole life being resourceful. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. The dust has settled, but grief in Montana is spreading as we learn more about the people killed and injured during that huge pileup near Hardin, called the most intensive multi-vehicle accident we've seen in this state. We're still waiting official confirmation on the identities of the six people killed, but today we talked with a driver injured in the crash for a first-hand account of how quickly everything happened. MTN's Jackie Coffin has the story. It feels like I was hit in the chest with a bowling ball. Wayne Bowles may not feel great on the eve of his 71st birthday, but all things considered, he feels lucky just to be here. The Post Falls, Idaho resident was one of the 11 people injured in Friday's 21-car pileup on I-90 near Hardin. The visibility went from what I would say maximum visibility to zero in a matter of seconds. Dust was so bad you really couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Wayne says suddenly a semi-tractor trailer popped up in front of him and he made a move out of instinct, turning the steering wheel to the left. Because I hit it at a, at a minute angle, instead of just getting wedged under the tractor trailer, it actually caused my car to spin out and I spun off into the bar ditch and over to the fence. The car that came up behind him, a Mercedes Sprinter van, then crashed into the semi. MHP's accident report shows the 60-year-old man driving that van was killed. A statement from Crosscut Recreation Center in Bozeman says that was their founder, Eric Love. His wife, Jackie, was injured in the crash and hospitalized in Billings. Wayne's wife was with him in the car, too, in a different way. One of the things that I was carrying with me was my wife's ashes. My wife passed away at the end of April, and my plan is to take her ashes to Rio Dosa, New Mexico, because that was her favorite place in the whole world, and I've got her ashes 
Wayne's chest injury is deep bruising from the airbags deploying during the crash, but after some physical and emotional healing, he'll be back on track with his plan to visit his daughter in Texas and then lay his wife to rest. The powers that be didn't want me to wait too long before you get back on the horse, as the old saying goes. I, I needed to get back behind the wheel, and I knew that. I've driven lots of miles, so I knew I needed to get behind the wheel. She made the ride right along with me. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Well, starting this Friday, you'll once again be able to drive the Beartooth Highway. Several sections of the famous road connecting Red Lodge to Cook City were washed out during last month's flood. But the Montana Department of Transportation says crews are ahead of schedule and almost finished making repairs to the highway. Highway 212 is now expected to reopen at 5 p.m. Friday, although the northeast entrance to Yellowstone National Park does remain closed to vehicle traffic. In the coming days, we really have the heat building in across the region. We're going to have above average temperatures and also dry conditions. So it's going to even feel a little bit warmer with plenty of sunshine and a very light wind. Nothing to really move things around much as we saw today. In fact, take a look here across the region for Billings, Sheridan, Mile City and Livingston. The temperatures stay very warm through the end of the work week. And even though we see a drop off towards the weekend, that's going to come with isolated storms. But in the short term, with these temperatures above average, make sure you keep in mind that it's a good idea to make you sure you're hydrated. Apply that sunscreen. Try to wear a wide brimmed hat and maybe save those extra chores for outdoors until after the heat of the day. Wise Wonders Science and Discovery Museum unveiled its new children's exhibit this morning in downtown Billings. The exhibit models a grocery store where children are given the opportunity to learn realistically in a controlled setting. One of the main goals for that exhibit was to, to highlight the sort of everyday situations where kids can learn. And, and some of that is learning by, by playing. If you ever wanted proof that learning can be fun, this is it. A grocery store just for kids. We've got a bunch of exhibits that, that address science and math. Um, that you see in a lot of places, but this is one where I think we can bring the, the realities of science and math that we all experience to, to kids at their level. The children's grocery store at the museum was designed with a number of goals in mind. First and foremost, helping students learn hands-on. We wanted to feel as authentic as possible so that the kids had that real world grocery store experience. Um, but it's not just, um, you know, pretend play. It's about counting. It's about learning about nutrition, colors what types of fruits and vegetables are available. This exhibit and others at the museum are made possible by donations from the community. In this case, Valley Credit Union. What a better place to give back than to the kids, right? Uh, this is our future. We, we got to take care of them. The ribbon cutting was plenty hectic. But so is an actual grocery store. Hands on learning, as real as it gets. Instant chaos, but that's what it's about, right? These kids, they need to have that. They need to be able to have a safe, enclosed environment where they can have instant chaos. In Billings, checking out Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Well, kind of a tough day here at Q2 as we officially say goodbye to sports director Scott Breen as he gets set to embark upon a new career. Scott's been with us for more than three decades. He'll join us a little later, but right now we want to hear from some of those who know him best. I learned uh, how good he was at what he did uh, very fast. Uh, he uh, traveled to tournaments, stayed at, we stayed together at some of our state tournaments. We've, uh, you know, I was also in his wedding and we considered him one of my best friends. And um, I just think he's a tremendous at, at what he did uh, for the Billings community uh, in regard to sports. He's one of the best. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. With the rollout of the new 988 Prevention Lifeline, there's also a new option for veterans in crisis. Veterans can dial 988, then press 1 to be connected with trained responders for 24-7 crisis support. V8 officials say this shorter suicide and crisis lifeline number will make it easier for veterans and those who care about them to reach life-saving support. While well, the VA operates the Veterans Crisis Line through the 988 lifelines, you do not have to be enrolled in VA benefits or health care to use it. Now, if you or someone you know is in crisis, help is available around the clock. 
You can also send a text to 838-255 to be connected with resources. Well, the Centers for Disease Control says overdose death rates for black, American Indian, and Alaskan Native people increased significantly. According to the report, the number of overdose deaths per 100,000 people increased 44% among black people and 39% for American Indian and Alaska Native people in 2020. Other key findings show that overdose death rates of black men over the age of 65 was nearly seven times that of white men in the same age group. Plus, overdose death rates for American Indian, Alaska Native women were two times that of white women. The CDC says the death rates are driven largely by illicitly manufactured fentanyl. Well, Ed will be right back with weather, but first, more wishes for longtime sports director Scott Breen as he signs off tonight. Scott, you uh, are truly a professional um, master uh, broadcaster, uh, the sporting community of Billings is going to miss you tremendously and I want to wish you the best of luck in your next endeavor. You're going to do great. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Temperatures were pretty warm today, but in the next few days, the big story will be rising temperatures. And as we're seeing with the Stockman Bank weather cam, as Annie said, the sun will come out tomorrow. Temperatures today were right at average for the daytime high at 89 degrees. Started off at 62, just two degrees warmer than average for this time of the year. But the big story, the wind up to 43 mile per hour gusts early in the day felt pretty good. The winds were not quite as strong and it certainly took the edge off some of the warmer temperatures. Wind speeds today, especially strong mile city. 51 miles per hour is your top wind gust. 53 in Jordan today. 42 for you in Sheridan. Also breezy around Livingston and uh, Grable, but where we were expecting the stronger winds, that's where we got it in the eastern plains of Montana into the Dakotas. Temperatures right now are into the 80s across most of Montana. Montana and northern Wyoming. Livingston, you came in at 90, your last report. 87 Sheridan Mile City, 84 in Cody. We're pushing up close to 90 degrees along the High Line as well. And we could see a few of these temperatures actually bump up a little bit here in the next short while. Very quiet on our satellite radar mix here this evening. Not even much for clouds, let alone any chance of showers. So we're going to switch this over to visible satellite. These are actually images from space taken from uh, uh, from the satellite. And so where we see those little speckles, that's all clouds. But right here north of Salmon, Idaho, that's where you see the fire and the smoke continuing to move out. Now we had a huge plume of smoke moving out of this fire yesterday and it settled down during the day. But now we're starting to see it act up just a little bit more. And part of the reason it's moving towards us. The upper level winds are cutting right across Montana. So we got this big ridge of high pressure that's allowing these warm and dry conditions to build in. And then the monsoonal storms to our south are staying to our south. So the jet is shunting all of the moisture. So that's going to keep us drier and warmer over the next few days. Maybe a little bit of a breakdown of the system towards the weekend. Isolated showers at best. So here's the setup with a strong upper level jet coming across. The potential for the smoke does come off that fire and could push across the region. It doesn't look like it's going to be close enough to the surface that we've got major concerns as far as air quality. But from time to time, we could see some haze in the sky through the rest of the work week as that fire continues to burn. We'll keep an eye on those conditions as well. Temperatures in the morning will be mainly in the 50s to low 60s, fairly quiet overnight. The winds easing up in the eastern plains and mainly upper 80s to mid 90s for tomorrow afternoon. Upper 80s is average for this time of the year and then take it into Thursday and even hotter temperatures with a lot of the readings into the eastern plains, perhaps even in the upper 90s by the time we get later in the day. Here's a look at what's happening in the extended outlook. Temperatures are going to be the warmest here for the next three days. Sunshine, a disturbance on Friday starts to move in and the timing on that is a little bit of a question mark. So we might have to tweak the Friday forecast a little bit, but that could bring some winds in with it. We do back off on the temperatures a little bit on the second half of the super seven day forecast with slight chance of showers, mainly rain and high elevation storms. Trying to scale the wall of Wayne Newton's house at Shenandoah. 
I'm surprised we didn't get thrown in jail. I'm surprised we didn't get arrested. <laughs> but that and so many more memories, whether it was going to the Super Bowl or going to Wheeling, West Virginia, or the national finals, so Scott uh, and I will always be forever linked together as best friends and colleagues. Well, a day that we hate to see come. This is it for our own Scott Breen, the end of his sports casting road here at Q2. Tonight, his final thoughts and a heartfelt thanks to you. Well, this is a first. Never in my career can I recall starting a story with goodbye. Yet that's the situation tonight. And this is where it all started. My love for sports on these Little League baseball fields at Boulder Elementary School. It's where Dad actually helped coach my first ever sports team over there on the t-ball field. How do you sum up over 30 years in under three minutes? Well, you don't, but we can hit some high points. Now, this isn't a tribute to me, but rather a heartfelt thank you to you. Thank you to the kid I met in a college Spanish class of all places who told me he was going to be a sportscaster. I said, there's a major for that? He said, yeah, journalism. I said, sign me up. Thank you to Chris Byers, who turned me loose on my first story as an intern, badminton at Eastern Montana College. I didn't know one end of the frame from the other. An instant mentor, CB, showed me how to have fun and success. To this day, he's family, and to me, he'll never have a sports casting equal here in Montana. He's also the one who nudged me out the door and advised me to take the main job at Q2 after 13 years of working with him. Thank you to KTVQ on more levels and to more colleagues than I can express. You've been a home away from home for a third of my life, giving our sports crew freedom and creativity to tell some remarkable stories. One of my favorites... Deep, deep! Billings is going to the championship! Thank you, 2011 Little League Baseball All-Stars. Wow, you caught lightning in a bottle, turned it into magic, and that summer captured hearts all over Montana. I've never worked at anything harder in my entire life. Thank you to J.R. Vazane and Shelby, courageously for you and your family to relive and retell your gut-wrenching rodeo story. In detail, was mind-blowing. Even more so, J.R., your fierce will to walk again at the recent National Finals Rodeo brought even the toughest cowboys to tears. You know, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Thank you coaches, activities directors, and athletes gracious enough to make time for me. Beyond championship stories, thank you for sharing ones filled with both humor and heartache. Thank you to a craft that allowed me to ask Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan questions, to cover a Super Bowl in person, and to caddy at the Women's British Open. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for helping me with a four-year college education, only to find out my first TV job would barely pay $12,000 a year. I know it would have been easy to push me off the rims at that moment, but you never wavered. Even on nights when a 12-minute sports cast after a 12-hour day painfully crumbled one video at a time on live television, you still thought it was good. Maybe the volume was turned down. Thank you to my wife and kids who've put up with my odd hours and deadlines. You are the best, and I know you're hoping I'll ease up when I say we're leaving in four minutes. So what now? I've accepted more family time, flexibility, and a golden opportunity with Daktronics. Little League fields, high schools, NFL stadiums, and others worldwide, they are an industry giant designing and building scoreboards, shot clocks. And it's already got a plug-and-play thing in it. Jumbotron video systems and a lot more. I'm eager to handle Montana and part of Wyoming, working with a lot of you, the same people and friends I have for years. Truth is, I've never actually had to grow up. Why would I now? You'll still be stuck with me at ball fields, tournaments, and rodeos. You'll just find me a little bit closer to the scoreboards. Once again, a heartfelt thank you. Scott Breen, MTN Sports. When we come back, Scott will join Ed and me for one final farewell but first, one very funny recollection on Scott's golf game. Scott was also uh, uh, an avid golfer. We played a lot of golf together, and uh, I can remember a couple th times, uh, one that he wanted to uh, quit at Briarwood. He was a member there, and he wasn't playing very well, and he was ready to walk off on the fifth hole, and I really had to talk him down. Uh, luckily, we weren't by, by the 16th hole. He might have jumped off, but uh, he ended up uh, playing a seven iron the rest of the way, and uh, his attitude improved.
Well, Scott, I think I uh, speak for all of us here at Q2 when I say we're going to miss you, and thank you for the great work you've done over the years. Uh, thanks to you guys and all the colleagues that carried me all through the years, you know. I mean, there are so many, whether it's in the control room or behind the camera, Dan Dragon right here, Chance, you know, it's, you name them, and you can't name all of them, you know, but geez, I've worked with a lot of them, a lot of different video formats. Used to be you'd lug 60 yeah. to 70 pounds of gear in a tripod, you know, and now it's you shoot something on a, your cell phone almost anymore, yeah. you know. My so. back still suffers from it, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is kind of a nomadic career. You see a lot of people come and go. You decided to stay here in your hometown. Were you ever tempted to leave? I was. I went to Bakersfield, California for a short time and um, was miserable. I was gone in six months, came back here. I figured, you know what? great education system in, in Billings. I grew up here, great place to raise a family. You wake up, you got the mountains out one window and the rims out the other. No better place for me to live and start a family. Yeah, and I tell you, the, the connections you've made with the community, all the communities around here over the years, really a special thing. It, definitely, and I've been privileged because in, in a world where news can sometimes be so, uh, I was able to tell the lighter side, you know, much like Ed with the weather, have, have some fun with it, you know, so very fortunate there and, uh, and uh, I'll miss it, but I'm eager to move on and, and for a lot more family time. Right. We're going to miss you.